what's up survivors welcome back all right so this one is a little bit of a different this is going to be kind of me talking about my thoughts on myth of empires and uh the content and the stuff that's been released and just some of all the new stuff that's coming out as well as my thoughts on the region lock servers which um might surprise you actually so i first wanted to cover um my thoughts on the game my, my impressions on the game uh as somebody who played the original launch of the game as well as the original beta and about a thousand rough hours of the game um periodically over the last two plus ish years um i highly recommend it it is a diamond in the rough style game now is it for everybody no it's not going to be for everybody uh, some people might find it you know it's too grindy or um there's not enough PVE content or it's it's not really solo based like they can't really play solo, which if you can't play solo, then maybe you're just not playing the correct way. And I say that I say that politely. I'm not being rude when I say that. Um, I say that based off of uh, the game is you can't play official. So you can play official solo. I'm not going to say you can't. You can play official solo. But at the same time, I feel that if you're going to play on official solo, you're setting yourself up for a long, tedious, endless grind of just craziness. Like you're going to be constantly farming, constantly grinding, and it, it'll take a toll after a while. Um, so I don't recommend it. And I, I encourage people and I heavily recommend people to play with the clan if you're going to play unofficial um even if it's a, you know you join like a 20-man clan or a 30-man clan and you know you break off into small you know little groups and things like that do that if you want to play solo true solo i recommend that you play offline because if you play offline and you're playing solo, you can go into solo hosted mode. And when you go into solo hosted mode, you can play novice mode. Novice mode basically bumps everything up to like times five. And it's like playing with a five man clan. You level five times faster. You farm five times faster. You recruit five times faster. You gain action points five times faster. It allows you to play solo. And I actually use the solo hosted mode um, to do a good chunk of my guides that I'm going to be pushing out here soon. Um, and some of them I'm going to be doing on my official server that I play with, with my community, as well as others out there that just join up and want to play. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. Uh, I've had questions about what are my thoughts on region block servers. Now I do think they are necessary, but however, there is a massive red flag with region block servers i don't think a lot of people are thinking about when they like we need region block we we don't want to have to deal with the chinese well you're not stopping just the chinese you are stopping everyone from playing on that server that isn't in your region if you don't buy a if you don't buy this game if like if you buy this game and you and you're in let's say europe and you're like, we need region block because we're tired of, you know, I'm just going to use the Chinese Zergs as an example, because most people are familiar with them. We don't want them. You're also stopping North American players, South American players, Australian players, Oceanic, well, Oceanic players. You're also stopping them from being able to play with you. And a lot of times they're not a problem either. So the biggest red flag with that is what are you going to do when your server starts to die? You requested a region block, but now the community is down to 40, 50 players instead of 500 players. What are you going to do when that happens? While the rest of the unregion block servers are still pushing thousands of players strong. That is my biggest thing. That's my biggest red flag that I personally don't approve of region block servers. I think having one region block server per region is more than enough. 
because the long-term effect of a region block server is you are diminishing the amount of people that can come to that server. You are blocking the rest of the world from being able to play with you, which keeps that server from growing unless you can recruit people within your region to play on it. But the majority of the population is not playing in region blocked. They're playing on non-region block servers. Matter of fact, it's almost a three to one, almost, in some cases, a four to one ratio in population. I was looking at um, the region block servers at three or four different times throughout the day. I, I looked at them at early in the morning on EST in the evening and then late at night. And almost every single time it was a either a three to one or a four to one ratio. There were 20 something people on a region block PVP server. But if you went over to a non region block PVP server capped like 20 servers all capped. So it just, it doesn't, the long-term effect of having too many region block servers is eventually they're just going to get rid of them. So all those people that are playing on PVE on region blocked, they might lose their server. So that's something to keep in mind by constantly requesting region blocked. Now, instead of maybe adding more servers, they should just add more counties to existing region block servers. That would be my suggestion to the development team because adding too many servers will just backfire in the long run. But maybe add two or three more PVP counties to a region lock server or two or three more PVE counties to a region block server instead of adding more servers. So I don't know. That's I, that's I mean, I know that's my personal opinion. Of course, I'm not telling people that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't play region block. Play it if you want to, but keep in mind that there is a massive long-term life expectancy that you have to be aware of when playing region blocked. So that's my thought on that. My thoughts um, moving on to the new PVP stuff, the triangle, the holy triangle of PVP that this game is slowly adopting, land, sea, and air. Um, do I think it's a good move? Yes, I think it is a I think it is probably the best move in the right direction. Um, it adds in so much extra variety to attack and defense. That any number one of those any number of those combinations could change the tide of a fight in a blink of an eye. I mean, it is that crazy how it can just completely change the tide of a battle between a group um the automated defenses um love them i think they're uh, probably one of the best moves i'm glad they made that decision um using animal powers for those automated defenses best move ever giving them you know the food in order for their gasoline and treating the food as gas and the animal as the engine i think that is a very unique and very smart way to go about it it, it builds upon stuff that's already in the game so they don't have to add extra resources and add extra stuff they just build upon something that already exists i think it's a very again unique way to go about it and i like it um i've been enjoying it at least in some aspect when i've been playing around with it we haven't really done a lot of playing around with it in the official pve community but i've played around with it a lot in uh, solo offline and i've done a little bit with a couple of guys on pvp that i was playing with on a different character um <clears throat> and it's really fun it definitely adds a lot more variety it's uh i feel like there's still a big learning curve for a majority of the community because most people still haven't realized the benefits of specific type of creatures sorry discord went off um like versus rabbits versus foxes and you know wolves wolves, wolves versus boars or panthers versus tigers like each one has a different set of skills attributes and things that they excel at that they're good at so i feel like um once people start to realize that you know foxes are they they provide better power skills so when the turret shoots it might shoot slower but it hits harder where rabbits allow the turrets to shoot faster but they hit lower you know that kind of thing or how boars have better carry weight for you know powering a vehicle where wolves allow better bursts and speed that kind of stuff and a lot of people still haven't caught on to that and it's going to be a while and i've actually got a guide that i'm working on um 
that help that basically it doesn't give a rundown of all the skills because i don't know what all the skills are um but it helps with uh managing that stuff and understanding how it works and all that kind of thing um so i really like that feature um i'm excited for the pve side of the game that's getting some love finally um it is something that's way overdue and uh the game definitely needs it if it wants to survive on a larger scale uh because the potential um types of communities that will come to this game just for the building and pve aspect is massive there's a huge role play and a huge pve community out there that this game could be benefiting from and it hasn't been able to do that as well so uh i think moving forward by adding more pve content and allowing those things to uh thrive within this game outside of pvp will only bring the game uh you know more longevity it'll provide more longevity for the game um and that's my feelings on that whole thing so i'm hope i'm i'm really glad that they're they're looking towards the pve future um i'm excited for the quote unquote roadmap future planned content um that was re uh, recently um uh, announced uh, about the different things i'm excited for the fact that it's not just three but it looks like four potential civilizations uh with two of them planned this year um I like the fact that they are taking the tech tree route um, for that kind of stuff. So that's a good move on their part as well. Um, so that, that's going to add much, much more variety to the game, um, allowing uh, not just skins, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's just going to be skinned stuff of, of things that already exist. And maybe to some extent it will be skinned, but it won't be like, like, it's skin content you know it'll have its own tech tree um hopefully they improve upon that with its own maps and things like that for future content so i'm excited um so that that's 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 basically been my thoughts on the game so far uh do i think this game is um hmm. would i recommend this game yes i would recommend this game I would highly recommend this game, um, not only because it provides uh, long term enjoyment, it also provides a more. Um, oh, how do I want to word this? It provides a unique game style that it, it's not fully unique. I mean, you can play the combat very similar to Mounted Blade. Um, the building kind of feels a little bit own ish in a way um i feel like the pvp aspect of this game i feel like i'm playing uh you know um warhammer you know <laughs> i feel like i'm playing total war specifically um you know with all the different you know you know strategic combat styles and building defenses and you know you've got a you know small armies on each side all trying to fight each other and you're trying to find the best strategy to get in and get around people by using both land sea and air i feel like that's like kind of like the whole total war strategy but on an mmo's map size situation where you can't control individual units you kind of have to work together um to be able to do that kind of stuff so that door's open um the fact that you could jump between PvP and PvE at any time quote, with, within cooldown parameters, um, that is huge. And that's one reason why I would highly recommend this game to, uh, to new players is you don't feel like you've lost. If you lose everything on PvP, as long as you have a PvE base, you always have a place to go back to and rebuild and restart you can always transfer that stuff back to pvp reset up refarm you've already got all your horse breeding lines in a safe place you can transfer that to pvp and try again will you get wiped a few times probably but it's it's about the fact that no matter what at the end of the day you cannot lose everything not unless you decide to not pay your taxes on pve so it's it's a it's a win-win situation it's a no loss situation so you get wiped, you're only partially wiped. You never truly lose everything. And I feel like that is something that 
a lot of players a lot of games don't do and it's one of the reasons why a lot of people stay away from pvp content is because of the fact that they lose everything and there's like you're just starting from scratch but you don't start from scratch in this game not technically if you build a pve base and you have a home base on a pve server you always have some place to go home relax take a break do some casual crafting and farming slowly build up your resources or if you're a large group you have a home base where you can go back to all right we got wiped let's take a break strategize figure out how we want to do it this way refarm all the stuff transfer it over rebuild try again and if you get wiped again you get wiped again it's fine and I think that is a big part of this game that uh, I really feel like the community um, needs to it needs to express and push out to let other people know, hey, come here, come play the game, try it out, enjoy both aspects without worrying about losing stuff. Enjoy the the retainer system, the, P, the all this new PVE content, like all that stuff. So that that's basically my thoughts on the game so far and i know i dragged this out for a little over 15 minutes i was trying to keep this short but i just wanted to give my thoughts on the game about how uh the development of the game is going to be going and i think that they're going in the right direction um and that they are listening to the community on some level i know that there's a lot of people out there saying that they want a lot of tlc type stuff and um, i hope to see those types of things like you know being able to pick up stuff and after you place like a bench and things like that i know that was something that a lot of people are asking for is the ability to pick things up and move them if you don't like how it was positioned um i think that with the current building style in this game that might be a little difficult to do because of how things are placed and built um on some level but um I, I would personally push for maybe like a little bit higher of an item return when you demolish something because I feel like 25% of the resources back even sometimes lower isn't really worth it because this game can get really grindy. But at the same time, the game is only really grindy pre 40 slash 50. So I feel like once you get to late 50s and 60s and you start unlocking all the farming tools, and you have really good you know retainers to fight uh, you know camps with and clear stuff the resources are just endless at that point you have you have your retainers crafting for you you know you have your retainers doing most of the combat for you most of the farming becomes done with you know quote unquote machinery so you're not really doing it by hand anymore by that point there's no reason why you shouldn't have an overflow of resources so i i think that that's more just people um, getting a little nitpicky about early game and how it's just it's too grindy but that's early game the, the the start of the game is supposed to be grindy um it gets a lot easier and the leveling i feel like the leveling changes that they've done um are are really good i was a little disappointed with some of the skills where they moved them around because i feel like hey, they kind of dragged out that early game when you weren't able to do things that you normally could do at early game they switched those to mid game and it, i felt like that was a bad move but i see why they did it but that's here nor there but anyways guys so that's my thoughts on the game so far um these are my own personal opinions um you can feel to agree or disagree all you want that is your prerogative. That is your opinion. Everybody's allowed their own opinion. Um, I would like to hear your guys' feedback as well. Uh, keep it civil. I, I stress keep it civil because if you start drama or make a big deal out of something, I will just delete your comments. Um, so other than that, guys, uh, take care. Hope you guys are enjoying the game. If you're new and debating about playing the game, try it out. I, I highly urge you to try it out. Um, other than that, guys, uh, I'll see you guys out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys want to see more content. Uh, don't forget to join my Discord. And for those out there that would like to go above and beyond, um, I did recently reactivate my Patreon and started promoting it a little bit more because there are those out there that wanted to be able to do that extra step. Um, that is there for those that wish to do it. It is optional. Um, other than that, guys, take care. Peace out. And I will see you guys out there. Bye-bye.